In April of 2009, the ship was finally ready for her last voyage down the Atlantic seaboard. Once the Vandenberg reached Key West, it was time for the final month of cleanup and prep work before sink day. We had to encapsulate all the loose asbestos because they didn't want an asbestos cloud coming out when it sank. The masts were cut down and welded down on the deck. The dishes were lowered. The ship was prepared like no other ship's ever been prepared as far as the holes that were cut to allow the water to flood her evenly. Joe and his team worked closely with experts from the Stevens Institute of Technology in New Jersey to devise and test a solid sink plan for the massive ship. This had never been done before, but we figured that, you know, in order to ensure the best results, that we would get the most talented people. With a project that cost that much and meant that much to this community, we wanted to make sure it got done right. Shortly before the ship was ready to be sunk, Good morning. it was time for some final goodbyes. Uh, going to see an old buddy, the USNS Vandenberg, home for a goodly number of people for a long, long time. Yeah, there's... Lots of memories. It's been sitting in a storage not being useful for a long time. And I think uh, turning it into a reef for fishing and for diving and things is a, is a positive outcome. Its sister went to the boneyard in, in uh, Taiwan in about 84, 85 and was broken up and turned into razor blades and small toys and stuff like that. So this is a much better fate. We were thrilled that where she was going, she would keep her name and her place in history. Build of steel back in 44. After years of hard work, the day had come when the Vandenberg would reach her ultimate resting place. With hundreds of onlookers and crew in place, the ship was towed to her final destination. Never to the Vandenberg was sunk on May 27, 2009, and there was never a better day in my whole life. Ship sank in right around two minutes. It was seven seconds different than our modeling had said. So again, it wasn't perfect, but within a range we could live with. Once the ship was on the bottom, a team of expert safety divers had to make sure that the ship had sunk according to plan. We had to confirm under state law that all of the cutting charges had detonated properly before we could open the vessel to the public who was standing by very anxiously to get on the ship. Fortunately, all charges had detonated and the ship was standing upright in the sand. This project went very, very close to perfect. Turning this former missile tracking ship into an artificial reef was no cheap task. It actually wound up to be a little over $8 million. The city of Key West put up a million three. Uh, Monroe County put up $2 million. Uh, the Tourist Development Council put up another million dollars and the state of Florida picked up the rest and the Maritime Administration put in about a million three. What we have found is, is artificial reefs are uh, very much uh, economic generators for the local community, particularly when you look at cost-benefit analysis, how much it costs to put the reef in as opposed to how much benefit the community has gathered from that artificial reef. The, the numbers are pretty impressive. On Monroe County, it was $217 of economic benefit to the county for every dollar that was put into the artificial reef program. It's hard to think of another public works project that brings in that kind of economic benefit to a community. 
It didn't take long for Key West businesses to see a positive impact from having the Vandenberg nearby. Dive shop operators Bob Holston and C.C. Roycraft say it has exceeded their expectations. It actually helped us to achieve our best year in business in almost 40 years of business. And it was attributed directly to the, to the Vandenberg because the numbers were either flat or down prior to the sinking of the Vandenberg. After the Vandenberg went down, the numbers just skyrocketed. We've had people come from as far as Brazil, groups coming in from Norway, from Germany, just about anywhere in Europe. It was really great to see uh, the shipwreck and um, I was really impressed by, by um, diving there. The Vandenberg is the newest addition to the Florida Keys wreck trek, which starts with the Spiegel Grove in Key Largo. In between we have the Bib and the Duane, the Thunderbolt, uh, the D Adolphus Bush, and these are all just really great wreck dives. Nowhere else on the planet can you visit so many warships in such a short area. Having the Vandenberg in Key West has many divers excited. Former treasure hunter Pat Klein, who helped uncover the famous Spanish galleon Nuestra Señora de Atocha off Key West, has hidden a special treat on the wreck. I thought to myself, wouldn't it be great if there was some other sunken treasure that divers could find? And uh, the more I thought about it, the more I realized that it could be something from a Spanish galleon. So I got a grade one coin, and I purchased at the hardware store one of those, uh, uh, those tin uh, boxes that you keep keys in, that you fasten to your car. I fastened the coin to a part of the ship magnetically where it still resides, waiting for somebody to recover it. Hopefully somebody's going to find that, and they're going to uh, uh, maybe just a little bit experience what I had the opportunity to experience for over, over 30 years. Now that the shipwreck is on the ocean floor, natural resources managers are trying to determine what impact this artificial reef has on fish populations and the health of the surrounding natural reefs. Just as we wouldn't go into a forest and cut a tree down and make a telephone pole and have a bird land on that telephone pole and say, see there, we provided new habitat, we shouldn't be doing that with artificial reefs. We need to call it like it is and, and point out that they're placed there as a tool to attract divers from the natural reefs. We're not placing them there for fisheries management purposes, but we want to see them there to relieve some of the diving activity on the natural reefs. Two different monitoring projects are underway to study the impacts the shipwreck is having on its natural surroundings. One being a user study where we compared the use of the natural reef system, the reef and the artificial reefs in the vicinity of Vandenberg for a year prior to the ship going in and then we are in the middle of doing that for one year after the ship went in to determine if the user pattern changes, if people are actually not using the natural reefs quite as much as they were before. Opinions differ on whether or not the placement of an artificial reef helps take pressure off the natural reefs. The benefits have been good to most of the dive shops in Key West. I think that's also telling us a lot of the divers are moving off the natural reefs to the artificial reefs. The Vandenberg has been heavily promoted as a dive site and a dive attraction, uh, which of course brings people in that may not ordinarily be here. So we actually may see a net increase in diving on both the Vandenberg and adjacent natural reefs. People that dive the ship are probably going to dive the reefs as well. So from that standpoint, it's great economically, but I don't know if we'll be able to say that it's taking pressure off of natural reef sites. In the upper Florida Keys near Key Largo, Diving pressure on the natural reefs did slightly decrease after the sinking of the ship Spiegel Grove. There was less pressure on the natural reef by a pretty small amount, about 14 percent. For the first year after the Spiegel Grove went down, we don't have any real information beyond that first year. It's too soon to tell whether the Vandenberg will produce similar results. In the meantime, however, experts do agree that it is already attracting large numbers of fish. There wasn't much there before the ship went down. After the first month 
of being on the bottom, the ship had already attracted over 40 species of fish. And now we're up over 100 species that we've documented already. The Reef Environmental Education Foundation is conducting the second part of the monitoring, which involves diving the site before the ship was placed on the bottom, followed by a quarterly monitoring over the next year, and then biannual monitoring over the two years after that. Reef was contracted by the state of Florida to look at the fish populations on the Vandenberg and seven other adjacent reef areas to look at how the wreck recruited new fish and enhanced fish populations and if the ship itself affected populations of fish on the natural reefs. I think what we're seeing so far is that the wreck is actually enhancing populations. Of course it depends on the usage on that site as well. If there's heavy fishing pressure then we're going to could see uh, a net loss because the fish may be attracted from a widespread area and concentrated on the wreck making them easier to catch. But I don't think we're seeing that. I think we're seeing a lot of diving going on on the wreck, non-extractive activities, and uh, I think the wreck is serving to enhance populations at this point anyway. Scientists say there are still more questions that have to be answered to consider this project a complete environmental success. We have to be focused on all the risk involved. Uh, the environmental risk, what happens as these ships deteriorate over the next hundred years? We're not talking about just our generation, what, but what about the future? We can't ever underestimate the need to protect the natural habitats, the coral reefs of the Florida Keys. That's the gem, that's the jewel of South Florida. The USNS General Hoyt S. Vandenberg served its country for nearly 40 years. Now, instead of its memory fading to the pages of history books, it continues to attract and amaze scuba divers from around the world. It's an underwater Disneyland. Diving the Vandenberg is like seeing the Grand Canyon for the first time. It'll take your breath away. Sure, there are famous ones way out in the Pacific and in other places, and they're fantastic, but this is the one you can drive to. Major funding for this program was provided by the Bachelor Foundation, encouraging people to preserve and protect America's underwater resources.